Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't believe I did that. I actually filmed all of that, but I didn't actually put the filming on. <laughs> right, so basically this is the array. It's not completely cleaned off yet um, because we've got to take the edging off as well. Uh, but basically that's pretty much it. Also, I could do with finishing that right back to the metal. Uh, you can see now that's the little channel where the, um, the thermistor went, which uh, came out. You can see that there's some uh, uh, stuff in there as well. I think that's just the heat sink paste. And this is the actual thermistor. It's still intact and it will probably still work if I, um, if I connect it up because it's, uh, as you can see, it's, uh, yeah, it's still there. You can see the connections are still made and everything. So it didn't get broken down. We used paint thinner basically that's stuck there uh, to try and get some of it off because I haven't got any petrol um, so what I'm going to do now basically is sit this upside down in some petrol and soak it and it'll probably take this off as well uh, which is the glue that was used around the edge um, but yeah and uh, one of these effectively this is an equivalent to the original array so this has got this is um, an IGBT unit and um, this is a natural pipe, it's twice the power um, because uh, you've got, you can see it's FF600 R12, right? The 600 means 600 amps, and the 12 means basically 1.2 kilovolts. It's 1200 volts, <laughs> and that's how the, the serial number of this works. Yeah. And inside there, in actual fact, inside there is, is six IGBTs, they're all sharing the same die. So you've got like three on this side and three on that side, plus the uh, freewheeling diodes uh, are on the die. So each of those IGBTs can actually handle 200 amps and they go all in parallel 600. And uh, But they're laid out in a way and there's channels around them so that you don't get the voltage uh, fire across. Yeah, of course it's made, it's made a single unit. Now, how I'm going to mount it, I don't know. I've still got these things and they've still got the bolts in them, so we can maybe construct something <clears throat> to clamp it in place. Uh, that is the equivalent of the array that it's replacing, effectively, <coughs> because we've got these are 75, uh, 75 amps each, but they're 600 volts, not 1200. This is a 1200. And so if you think 75, that's 150, that's 300, and the whole eight is 600. So that's a high side, and this is actually the high side because I've got my original, uh, <coughs> I've got my original um, uh, uh, schematic that I did, and you can see that the high side is actually on the outside of both of them. So these arrays here were for the outside; these were all in parallel, uh, apart from the gates, which had a gate resistor on them all. And these were the low side ones. And on this side, these are the low side ones. And those the high side ones are on the outside and the low sides are on the inside. Yeah. But those would be a, basically, that would be a half bridge, right? For And it would be 600 amps. And then you have another half bridge there, 600 amps. So that is definitely, that is just the equivalent, basically. So if you put one of them on there and another one on there, then you would have the equivalent in the same. But obviously, that's a lot neater. We don't have all this paste around. You do inside, of course. It's got paste inside it. Um, there, like I say, there's six. Um, there's actually six IGBTs inside there. Uh, three for the low side and three for the high side. And there's six um, freewheeling diodes. And each one of those is 200 amps, basically. So you're handling three in parallel here for the 600 amps. Another three in parallel there for the 600 amps. That's how it's constructed inside, and it's all full of gel and everything. You can take the top off and actually see into it. It's quite nice. Um, but the way the current is laid out, of course, is, is much better because you've got your two input terminals there and they've got sufficient spacing so they're not going to arc across. And then you've got your two outputs, which are actually cross-connected to the same. Uh, but really, you should bridge them across because they actually have the bus connection inside. It has two sets of bus connections to here. So you should bridge them across, really, to get the full current. Um, on the output and you can literally you can replace them although you would need to machine these are actually bumps they're actually raised bumps as you can see they're not flat and so you've got a, a ridge there 
And so if you actually wanted to put this on there, you really should machine that down. The other way I can do it is, and I might actually do it that way just initially, is basically to construct a plate that goes on here that will bolt on and then bolt that onto the plate. I might do it that way instead, just so that we can get the uh, conduction um, that way, because then I can bolt this directly onto the plate and then bolt the plate onto there. And that might give me the ability to just mount it. And then I can use this. Now, <clears throat> as I say, that is a half bridge. And, and another half bridge on there to put those in parallel uh, would give me the 1200 amps. And so I actually have those two half bridges and, and just simply connect them in parallel across the bridges. So you have the high side and the high side connection, the low side and low side connection, if it's that way around. Then that would be the equivalent. And that actually would work. And you could use that even in a Tesla, which has blown uh, drivers, obviously you'd have to clip, you know, have to go through this process of clearing all that shit off and then cleaning it right back to the metal. And then you'd have to somehow construct a mounting, which I haven't got, um, and do it that way. And you could even have the, because the, the, the uh, thermal has come out, but this actually has got a thermal on it. I think that's the thermal connection there that you could just simply connect directly in. And, uh, and you've got one on each actually, so you'd have both of them. Uh, so you could actually replace this whole array with, with a couple of these uh, and it would work the same because it's the same, effectively it's the same uh, power rating except for these are 1200 uh, volts instead of 600 so you could actually take it up to 1200 volts except you can't because the capacitor is 450. Yeah, so that's it, that's, that's the plate, uh, that's its construction inside and you can see that quite well. I'm going to take a picture and we've got that one I've already got and so and this time I did actually record a video <laughs> and all I need to do now is get this edging off basically and I can use it or maybe you know, I'll just get it in a bath of petrol upside down and that should clean all that shit off and then just really go over it perhaps with um, a drill and some polishing or some wire brush maybe oh, I need to maybe machine those down I don't know these holes actually don't actually have screws in them it's just these ones in the middle here, these four, and then you've got four there and a four there, four there, four there, and those would do. And I don't think these holes do anything. I think they actually come through from the other side because some screw holes, in fact, you can see. There you go, they're right through. Those don't, those just go into it. And then there's these two here. I don't actually know what these are, but these come through from the other side as well. They've got screws in them, little thin screws. And then I think maybe these ones have got screws. No, they haven't. I'm just feeling the back. There's no actual screw. There might be a screw in there. I don't know. Has that one got one? I can't see it now. Anyway, that's it. That'll do me for now.